Hi and welcome to Full Tower TV, my name is Rafael and in this video we are going to talk about everything you need to know before you are buying the Montec XR case. So let's start with the most important thing. Uh, first of all, this case comes with a Type-C connector in the front. In order for that Type-C connector to work, uh, you'll need to plug a special dedicated cable into your motherboard. Now, not all motherboards have this connector, so go ahead and make sure that your motherboard has this connector. It looks something a little bit like this. Uh, you can see it uh, usually uh, located next to the RAM slots of your motherboard. Next, let's talk about uh, the compatibility with uh, different parts in this case. So for motherboard support, uh, it supports pretty much all the uh, standard sizes these days. Uh, so you have full ATX, micro ATX and mini ATX motherboards. For CPU cooler, uh, you can put up to 175 millimeter in terms of height in, a sup in the CPU cooler and for GPU up to 420 millimeters in length. So some examples for CPU coolers that will fit great with this case. Uh, the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin, which is 155 millimeter um, in height and even if you want to go with a Noctua NHD15, which is a bit bigger, it can still fit in this case. For GPUs, you can pretty much uh, fit any GPU you can think of in this case, even if you want to go uh, with a very big GPU like the, like the Asus RG Astro, uh, which is a very big card. Uh, even if you're considering the Gigabyte Gaming OC, which is also a very big card, and the MSI Gaming Trio. So pretty much every GPU you can think of uh, will fit in this case. So for motherboards, if you're not sure which type of a motherboard, uh, let's say if you already have a motherboard and you're not sure which, I, uh, which size you have, of course you can always try to look for the model, it should be printed on the motherboard. But a quick and easy way to check will be actually to count the number of mounting points for screws on your motherboard. For standard ATX, you can see there's nine mounting points. For micro ATX, you have six mounting points. And for mini ATX, you have four mounting points. Now, some micro ATX motherboards uh, are a little bit ex more extended than uh, typical ones. So instead of six, mounting points you can find eight mounting points now let's talk a little bit about cooling so this case can support up to 360 millimeter AIO up in the top of the chassis you can also put a 240 millimeter AIO uh, at the top at the back if you really want to you can remove the pre-installed fan and put 120 or 140 millimeter radiator for fans, at the bottom you can mount up to three 120mm fans and if you're not using an AIO and you want to use an air cooling inst instead, you can also mount uh, more fans at the top of the case, so up to three 120mm fans or two 140mm fans. Now the case comes with three 120mm uh, pre-installed ARGB fans Two of them are reversed, which means that the direction of the airflow uh, is reversed and it's actually taking air inside the case and not outside like a typical fan. Now, a couple of things that are worth mentioning here if you're really building with this case uh, that you should know. And I am going to use uh, a video by Christopher Flanagan, uh, which made a very good build guide about this case. Uh, and of course I will link it down uh, below in the description uh, if you want to check it out you can uh, see more in depth uh, how to build with this case uh, and the first thing that I think uh, it's worth mentioning here as you can see when you put an AIO at the top uh, it will probably block the ports over here on the motherboard where you plug the EPS connectors so over here you have uh, connectors that you plug from the power supply that supply power to your CPU 
And if you're putting an AIO, uh, it will be blocked. So make sure that uh, you plug those connectors before, unless you're using a 240 millimeter radiator, which will give you the option um, to plug it without any trouble. But again, just go ahead and make sure. Same goes to the fans. If you are installing fans at the bottom of the case, make sure to do it before you install a graphic card. Otherwise, uh, it will be hard for you to uh, mount them with a screwdriver. As you can see over here, you need quite a bit of space. And one more thing about the pre-installed fans. As you can see over here, uh, it comes with uh, a daisy-chained uh, cable. So it means that um, all the fans are connected, connected one to each other. And you need only one plug on your motherboard in order to connect them. Which is a good thing and it saves you a lot of trouble uh, using any RGB controllers and stuff like that. Now, something that is very important to know about the RGB and how it works in this case. As you can see, at the front of the case, you have a power button and a reset button. And in some cases, you can uh, plug the reset button to an RGB controller in order to control the lights uh, through the reset button instead of doing it with software. In this case, unfortunately, uh, you can't really do so. And I will show you uh, how I managed to figure it out. Uh, again, by uh, Christopher's video, you can the see power. over here that he's Amazon showing plug it in how front. to plug the front panel uh, cable. And in some cases, this cable is separated um, by individual connectors. So I'll show you how it looks like. So usually it looks something a little bit like this. And then what you can do is take the power switch cable and plug it into an ARGB controller. But in this case, unfortunately, because Montek did a uh, full cable uh, without individual cables, uh, you want to be able to plug the reset switch into a controller, which means that you will have to use some kind of a software to control the RGB um, in this case. So an RGB software uh, can be something like MSI Mystic Light, a error sync by ASUS or even an open source software like OpenRGB. If you do want to use a controller uh, with a remote, for example, without using a software, uh, you can also do so. I'll put some links in the description down below so you can uh, look for yourself for alternative solutions. With all of that said, let's take a look at some builds and reviews uh, from people who actually bought the case and build a computer with it. So our first review here is by Xavier Simpson, uh, who says that it's an excellent PC case. The Montec XR PC case is a great budget friendly option with a slick design and good airflow. The tempered glass side panel looks premium and the RGB lightning adds a nice touch. Cable management is decent and there is plenty of space for fans and cooling. The boot quality is solid for the price, though the metal feels a bit thin in some areas. Overall, a great case for the price with good aesthetics and airflow. And as you can see over here at the pictures, he did something quite interesting with this case. And I really want to just quickly uh, take a look and show you exactly how he built this computer. So as you can see what uh, Xavier did here, he used a 360 millimeter AIO with a very long graphic card. And he also put uh, some uh, fans at the bottom of the case. Now I did manage to figure out which fans are installed in his computer. And these fans are actually the Thermalrite TLS12 fans. Now there's two variants of these fans. You have the R, uh, which is the reverse, uh, version of this fan and you have the non-R which is the S12W. So as you can see this fan is your normal typical fan uh, with the blades facing towards the back and the RGB is at the front and you have these fans which have reversible blade design and you can see the blades are facing towards the front and the RGB at the front. So in case of Xavier's uh, computer, he actually um, bought, I think, the normal version, 
which does have the RGB at the back, but as you can see, the logo is facing downwards. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, if you're doing something similar to this, make sure to buy the reverse fans for the bottom uh, and the side over here. And over here, you want the normal fan. You can get these fans uh, in triple packs and single packs, but it is something that I managed to caught uh, in his build and you just need to make sure you buy the right fans. Another review here by Gamer Mom PCs, who says best budget good airflow fish tank style case bought this twice and it filled the bill completely both times. They actually uh, build twice in this case and let's see some examples. You can see over here they used an air cooler uh, with custom fans. I think they did manage to put the fence at the bottom in the wrong direction, but I could be wrong. It doesn't look like they did it with the blades facing upwards so it can uh, take fresh air inside. It looks like the, it's pushing air downwards, which is not very ideal to be honest, but uh, again, it's very hard to judge, judge by the picture. I could be wrong here. Let's see some more pictures over here. You can see the front panel more closely, which looks pretty nice. Uh, I like the fact that it's at the bottom. If you put the computer on your table, it's nice and easy to um, to have access to instead of it uh, being at the top. And this is the second build, I guess, which has a different theme to it uh, with different fans. I think these are the Unify fans, if I remember correctly, but you can see over here also an AIO and not an air cooler. Uh, and yeah, again, very, very, very cool. Another review here by Troy, who says, Outstanding value, mind blown. Where to start this case is just an amazing value at 64 bucks. I originally ordered the Thermaltech View 270, but shortly after found this for 20 bucks cheaper, and I'm glad I did. This is better than the Thermotake. Uh, pros included fans are great quality building, ample room for everything, white finish seems great, rubber grommets for routing cables, airflow is good, the glass is crystal clear, front bottom IO panel is perfectly for desktop setups, and the PCI screwing screw rotating cover, reusable PCI slot co covers, not knockouts like the Thermotake. So yeah, uh, what he's talking about is uh, some cases have the PCI slots uh, in a way that you need to break them. And over here, they put it with screws and you don't need to break them and you can reuse them if you change the position of your graphic card for whatever reason. Uh, the only one thing he can think uh, for a con is the metal is a bit flimsy, but that's usually the case with this price range. So yeah, that's the second time we see someone talks about the uh, metal frame not being very robust, but the conclusion is you just can't find this many features at this price. Uh, so yeah, another very positive review. And as you can see, also a very beautiful case, beautiful build, sorry, with uh, this case in a white version. And as you can see here with additional fans at the bottom. Uh, yeah, looks very, very, very cool. Another very nice build you can see here by Bolu, uh, which again went, uh, I think it's a black case, but with a white theme inside. Uh, so you can see over here a 360 millimeter AIO. This is a Thermorite AIO. I can't re remember exactly which model, but uh, it looks very nice. You can see also a white radian uh, card over here, which honestly I never saw before. And it looks very, very nice. You can see the added fans at the bottom uh, really complete the look for this case. And I think it's very, very cool that uh, you can add those fans at the bottom. It makes the case look uh, very, very nice. This is another example for an air-cooled uh, build uh, with extra fans at the top and at the bottom. You can see over here, uh, very, very uh, nice looking. And the user says, A++ case. Wasn't expecting much for the price, but case came in and I was shocked with how well built it was and rubber inserts for 70 bucks cannot beat 
it very happy, 110% recommended. So yeah, it seems like people are very happy with this case. Even Donald Duck approve it. And you can see that you can also uh, mount the GPU vertically here, apparently. You can get very creative uh, with this case. I really recommend you to check some builds and reviews yourself and see what you think. Uh, let me know if you have any question or anything that you want to know furthermore. And uh, until the next time, thank you for watching Full Tower TV. My name is Rafael and I will see you in the next one.